We're now going to look at the structure of our application. Um, we're going to create the directories that we need and the files that we need within those directories. And as we're going along, I'm going to just explain um, basically what these are going to do, just so we've got a really good idea of how this system all fits together and how we should be structuring everything. Uh, and then in the subsequent parts of this of this series, we'll be actually filling in the code and, and actually making everything work. So um, I've got a, an empty directory called uh, OOPLR. This is just the root directory of that I'm working in and what I'm previewing in my browser. So I'm going to go and create a new folder and we have four folders within this and then uh, files within these folders. Now obviously we're going to require a classes folder um, simply because we are going to be working with classes and storing classes. Um, another folder that we're going to need is a core folder and this is just going to hold our initialization file which is going to um, auto load classes and things like that. We have a functions folder, we're still working with functions, we're going to have a sanitize function, that's the only thing that we're actually going to uh, include. And we are also going to include an includes folder and this is going to store things like errors um, in, in this case we're going to have a 404 error if a user profile isn't found and we're going to automatically include that um, and display it to a user so they're the four folders that we need let's take a look at the files that we need outside of these folders first now the first file is going to be um, the index.php file fairly straightforward so uh, let's go ahead and store that there we go. So we've got index.php. That's just going to be the file that the user lands on and has the ability to um, log in, click log in, etc., etc. The second file that we have is going to be login. That's obvious. This is going to process a user login. We're also going to have the ability to log out. So we have a log out. We're also going to um, have the ability to view a profile. And we also need to be able to register if we haven't logged in or if we don't have an account. And we want to be able to update our profile. So we need an update file. And we also need to be able to change our password. Now that's everything. So let's go ahead and just close all these files. So inside of classes, these are the main sort of meat of the application. These are the cool, interesting things that we're going to use to um, work with all the functionality. So we're going to have things like input helpers, so to help us uh, work with input really easily. Um, things like validation classes to quickly and easy va easily validate. And creating these classes um, is going to take a little while to get your head around. I uh, sort of understand if you've never worked with um, work with oriented ob uh, object oriented programming before but in the end you're going to end up with something that's going to save you so much time in the future so these are the really cool parts of our application so the first thing is going to be config.php what this is going to do is it's going to it's, it's going to allow us to draw uh, config options from our config in our init.php file that we're going to create inside of our core directory so it basically allows us to say what's my database name called pull it from config. It's, it's going to be a really quick way to access different configuration um, values from your application. Now cookie.php is the next one. Now this is, might seem obvious, it allows us to deal with cookies. So we, we have static methods like get or put or you know the ability to store cookies really easily, check if cookies exist. No messing around inside of your, um, inside of these files with actually pulling in um, you know, using sort of native PHP functionality. We're going to sort of abstract that and put that all in cookie.php. Um, now, DB is probably, or database.php is probably the biggest class that we're going to write um, alongside user.php. And this is a database wrapper. We're going to work with PDO, PHP data objects, um, to connect to a MySQL database in this case. Uh, but because we're using PDO, we can connect to any database we want, really. Um, we're also going to have a hash um, class. This is basically going to allow us to generate a, a variety of different hashes. So for things like salt, um, also for just general hashes that we're going to store 
you might want to hash a password or something. Um, so that's a sort of security consideration. We're going to have input.php, which allows us to work with input um, data. So that's going to be really, really useful. So we can do things like input get username, and this will return something like Alex, for example. So that's going to be really, really helpful as well. Um, so the next one is going to be redirect.php. So let's save this file, redirect.php. Now redirect is going to deal with things like um, 404 errors or redirecting to a specific page. So we're sort of, again, abstracting uh, the header function that we find in PHP. Uh, so we're not going to have to do header location index.php every time um, but we could also do stuff stuff like redirect to 404 or something like that so we'll be doing that so the next one is going to be session.php this is going to allow us to deal with php sessions so the ability to set a session uh, check if a session exists so check if a user's logged in basically um, that's fairly straightforward um, we're also going to have token.php now this is um, cross-site requ uh, cross request forgery protection in terms of PHP security. This is going to allow us to check if a token has been set on a form and it matches the current user session token. Uh, and this is really important because for cross-site request forgery, um, you know, the, the ability to, for someone to submit a form uh, or direct a user somewhere um, and then, you know, perform an action on their behalf is, uh, is you know, it's, it's a common PHP uh, security vulnerability when writing code. So we're going to use tokens to protect against that. Uh, and if you're unsure about cross-site request forgery, go ahead and, and look that up and you'll, you'll understand hopefully a bit about what it means. So user.php again is going to be a massive class, to allow us to log in, log out, um, perform all sorts of actions, update user details. And in user.php, we're going to use the DB class a lot to check uh, user information, um, update user information and things like that. So we're going to make use of the of the DB uh, wrapper or the database wrapper for that. So the last one, uh, again, is a, probably one of the coolest ones, I think, is the validation class. And this is going to allow us to do things like um, validate and check if validation has passed. Uh, and this is a massive time saver. And it can also be extended uh, to, you know, uh, cater for whatever functionality you want. So we're going to be able to validate things really quickly. Like, does that form field exist? Is that uh, bigger than 20 characters? Or, you know, does this username already exist? And things like that. So that's a really, really cool way to, to work with things. So they're all the classes that we're going to create. Uh, and the beauty of these classes is that you can take these and use them outside of this, uh, of this login and registration system, uh, as we've already discussed. So in core, we're only going to have one file, and that's just init.php. That's basically going to be included on every page that we use, and it's going to allow us to do things like auto-load classes, uh, so we don't have to keep requiring all the classes that we need in. Um, that's basically it. So inside of functions, um, we're going to uh, actually create a folder, uh, and this is going to be... Oh, no, sorry, we're not. We're going to create a file, uh, and this is going to be sanitize. PHP. And we're going to have a function in here that's going to just basically sanitize data so we can output data. Uh, remember, the user has the ability to update their profile information. Um, and if you are updating profile information, you know, you want to sort of protect against what you're outputting from your database. So inside includes, we're going to create a folder and this is going to be called errors. Now, inside of this folder, we're going to create a file called 404.php. So um, part of our redirect class is going to deal with outputting errors, uh, as we looked at just a moment ago. So we're going to have the ability to force an error on a user, for example, if a user profile doesn't exist. Um, and again, this can, be, this can be taken and used elsewhere in the application as well. Uh, but we're mainly going to be using it for if a profile doesn't exist. We want to force a 404 error. So that's all of our... Uh, directory structure. It does look overwhelming, but the majority of these classes are actually going to be extremely simple. The two that are going to be the longest is the user um, and the DB wrapper, but the validation class is slightly more tricky. The others are honestly a piece of cake. Uh, the rest of the application is just going to be making use of these classes. So the main focus really is on these classes. Once we've written all these classes, we can breeze through this code and really get a good system uh, working together. And it should be fairly straightforward from that point.